Hi everyone, let's get stuck into some trigonometry here. This is the first unit on trigonometry. We're going to be looking at trigonometric limits, two that you need to know. So we're just going to focus on 2.1 and 2.2 for this video. So two trig limits, which I'm going to show you the proofs for, uh, which are pretty simple. We just involve uh, a little bit of trigonometry to prove these two limits that we need to know. So what is a limit? You may recall doing this kind of stuff last year. So maybe you had a graph and if that is x equals 2 there and that is y equals 3 you would say the limit as x tends towards 2 of this function is 3 so really it is what we're talking about is um, what value does this approach what, um, what y value does this function approach as x gets closer and closer to 2. So in this case it's clearly going to be 3. Okay. Um, sometimes you get weird things going on. So you might get uh, a function that does this kind of thing. So even though there's a hole there, the limiting value there is still 3. The limit is x tend to 2 of that one there is still 3. Even though it might do something extremely strange like this. Okay, so the value of the function might be actually up here at 5, let's say, but the limit is still 3. All kinds of strange, funky things could be going on. Uh, what you can't have is something like this. Okay, um, now the limit as x tends to 2 does not exist because as you approach from the left, the value, the y value, is different from if you approach from the right. You've got two different y values. So in this case here, the limit doesn't exist. Okay, I'm sure you can remember doing things similar to this. So let's look at a few limits and work them out. The first one here, uh, the ob is the obvious way to do this is just substitute x equals 4 into this function here and see what happens. And if we do that, we get 0 over 0. That is a problem and there's a couple of strategies you can use to get over that so this is kind of revision from last year this is not specific to this year so let's check out how we do this one uh, for the first one here we could factorize so we've got x minus 4 x plus 4 on the bottom line difference of two squares then we could do some cancelling here and I end up with the limit as x tends to 4 of 1 over x plus 4 now if I substitute that in there it's easy, I get 1 over 8. So the answer is 1 8 for that one. Okay, what about this one here? Same thing, if I chuck in x equals 0, I'm going to get square root of 9 minus 3 over 0. I'm going to get 3 minus 3, 0 over 0, which is a problem. So what can we do for that one? Well, uh, there's a number of different things we could do. We could try multiplying the top and bottom here by kind of like the conjugate of the top line. So let me be a bit lazy and just say that's the limit of x tends to 0. We've got root x plus 9 minus 3 over x times root x plus 9 plus 3. We've done this a few times this year already. Rationalizing the, the numerator in this case I guess you could say. Okay. So on the top line, we end up with x plus 9, because it's a difference of 2 squares, minus 9. Just check that that's right. Yep. And on the bottom line, x times root x plus 9 plus 3x. Okay, so... Let's keep going, trying to simplify this thing here. So we've got the limit as x tends to 0. The top line is just going to be x. On the bottom line, we've got a common factor of x as well. So we've got root x plus 9 plus 1. Now the x's will cancel out. And then that leaves us with the limit as x tends to 0 of 1 over root x plus 9 plus 1. And now, if we take that and substitute x equals 0 in there, we get 
on the bottom line, root 9 is 3. I beg your pardon, that should be a 3 there, shouldn't it? Right there, sorry. When we took x out, we should have a 3. So on the bottom line, when we chuck x equals 0 in there, we now get root 9, which is 3 plus 3. So the answer to this one is 1 sixth. Okay, third one. If we now substitute infinity, which I know you can't really do in, in practice, you can't substitute infinity, but in this one here, if we uh, put a really big number in here and think, well, what's really going on here, you can kind of get an idea, but let's do it a little bit more algebraically. What I'm going to do here is divide every term by x. So we end up with this. Now, when I look at the limit as x tends to infinity of this thing here, I can see that 3 over a really huge number is really, really close to 0. So 3 over x, when it's, x is massive, is nearly really close to 0. So the top line is going to be really close to 2. Okay, so the limit as x tends to infinity. So the top line is going to be really close to 2. The bottom line, by the same logic, if you put a really huge number in here, 4 over a really huge number is really, really close to 0. 0 minus 1 on the bottom line is minus 1, so this limit is minus 2. Same method for this one here. I'm going to divide every term here by, well, I guess I could do 3x squared, but I'm just, actually I'm going to divide every term here by x cubed. So look at the highest power of x, divide every term by x cubed. So we've got... 3 over x there. On the bottom line, 1 plus 1 over x cubed. Okay. Now, as x is really, really massive, that's going to be 0. And this is going to be 0 also. On the bottom line, that is going to be 0. Or 10 towards 0, I should say. So we've got 0 minus 0 over 1 plus 0. Okay, and that's cool. That's 0 over 1, which is a number. If I had 1 over 0, I'm in trouble. But 0 over 1 is a number, and it is the number 0. So the limit of that thing there as x tends to infinity is 0. Okay, let's get to what this video is really all about, which is the limits for the trig that we need to know for the course. So, uh, here's the proof of how you show uh, this first limit here, which is uh, the limit about sine x over x. So it comes from this construction right here. If we've got a circle, radius r, there's an angle there of x radians. What we're going to do is just compare a few areas here. And we're going to use something called the squeeze theorem. Sounds cool. So, here we go. Uh, the area of the triangle there, OAB, is a half AB sine C. Since A and B, that is A and B in this case, are both the radius, we get a half R squared sine X. So that just comes from the formula, a half AB sine C for the area of a triangle. For the area of the sector OAB, we know this formula, that's a half R squared theta. In this case, we're talking about X as being the angle. So, we know that the area of the triangle is less than the area of the sector always. So therefore, this is less than that. Easy. Okay, let's look at another construction here. Um, Let's draw a tangent to A so that it joins the x-axis at C. We can clearly see that the area of the triangle is bigger than the area of the sector. And we're just going to do the same thing. Look at um, the expressions for the areas of both those things. We know the area of the sector is a half r squared x. We just did that one before. Let's look at the area of the triangle, which is a little bit trickier. To find the area of the triangle, we want to go half base times height, if you like. So a half times R times, and now we need to know the length of AC. All right, well, if this is X radians here, then we can say tan of X is going to be opposite, which is AC over adjacent, over R. So we could say AC is R tan X. Okay? So, therefore, the area of that triangle, OAC, is a half times R times R tan X. And that's where I get this thing from here. So we get a half R squared tan X. If we divide both sides by a half R squared, which we can do, 
this shows us that x is less than sine theta over cos theta which was just tan of x sine x over cos x which is just tan x similarly over here we divide both sides by a half r squared and we get sine of x is less than x alright let's put all this together we're going to put this fact together and we're also going to join it up with this fact right here you can see that x is kind of co the common thing here so um, next step of, of this one here going from this step to this step is all I've done is multiply both sides by cos x and divide by x so I get cos x is less than sine x over x okay let's put all of that together over here sine x is less than x which means sine x over x is less than 1 and now we've got this common thread here we know sine x over x is less than 1 and we know sine x over x is greater than cos x that means that sine x over x must be greater than cos x and less than 1 fantastic and what's that got to do with anything? well as x tends to 0 the limit as x tends to 0 of cos of x is 1 so therefore the value of sine x over x is sandwiched between 1 and 1 which means the limit of this thing as x tends to 0 is 1 there we go that's the proof second proof you should be aware of is about the limit of 1 as x tends to 0 of 1 minus cos x over x okay so um, this uses a little bit of tricky stuff here so just watch this see if it makes sense um, I've done the times by the conjugate thing here, times top and bottom by 1 plus cos x. We saw that earlier on. That gives us 1 minus cos squared x on the top and x 1 plus cos x on the bottom. Then 1 minus cos squared x is sine squared x using that uh, trig identity. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1. And then we've done something really tricky going from this step to this step here. So we've kind of split it up. Sine squared x on the top becomes sine x times sine x over x times 1 plus cos x. Now, as we see up here, it's important that you know that when we've got the limit of the product of two functions, we can just write that as the limit of one times the limit of the other. And that's what I've done at this step going from here to here. And we know this limit here, sine x over x is equal to one. This thing here, sine x over one plus cos x, as x tends to zero, that's just sine of x over one plus cos x. So that thing there is altogether is going to be zero. So you can see we've started off, this thing here is zero, because sine of zero is zero. So we started off with one minus cos x over x, and we've shown that the limit is zero for that one. So here's some kind of questions you could get asked in the exam. Uh, just slight variations, so one minus cos 2x over x squared, replacing the cos 2x with one minus two sine squared x, which is on the formula sheet allows us to write that as 2 sine squared x over x squared. We can then separate that into sine x over x twice. And I know the limit of both of these ones here is 1. So 2 times 1 times 1, which is 2. And the final one I just want to look at quickly, if you have something like sine 4x over x. Okay, so we're just trying to adjust these so they look like the two that we actually know about. So if I make this sine 4x over 4x, we had it looking like that, that would definitely be in the form that we want. So if I just do that, you can see I haven't changed anything, I've just times the top and bottom by 4. But now it's in the form that I want, sine of something over something. And I know the limit as x tends to 0 of sine a over a is 1. So therefore, this is just going to be 1 times 4, which is 4. Done.